Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am so excited because we are finally sitting down and talking about the tortured poets department. And I finally learned how to say it. Aren't you so proud? <laughs> I asked you guys over on Instagram to ask me different questions about the tortured poets department that you wanted me to sit down and chat about. And I have a bunch of responses from you guys. So that's... Blah, blah, blah. That is what we are going to be doing today. If you are new, hi, my name is Alexis. I am 23 years old and I am a huge Taylor Swift fan, obviously. And if you are interested in following me on any of my other social media platforms, I post almost daily Swifty content over on Instagram and TikTok, so both of those will be linked down below for you. All right, without further ado, let's jump in because I am so excited to talk about the Tortured Poets department. And I know I'm gonna get questions about my wonderful hat. It has a TTPD logo on it, and it is from Press Paper Shop. I love them so much, I'll have it linked down below. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and start answering some of the topics or questions that you guys proposed over on my Instagram. Lots of things have been happening about the Torture Poets Department. We've been having meetings during the Eras Tour where Taylor goes live on Instagram to show the part of the show where she will announce a new variant for the Torture Poets Department. And let me just tell you, we were bamboozled today. We'll get into it. I'm currently filming this on March 2nd. This morning was the night one of Singapore and lots of things happened. We'll get into it. Anyway, the first question that I have is what song are you most excited for I okay the track list chef's kiss I am so excited when I first saw the track list there was one song one song that stood out to me okay and that song is the smallest man who ever lived <laughs> that is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life I am so excited for that song First of all, Taylor Swift calling any man small? That's the funniest shiz I've ever heard in my life. I am just so excited to hear what that song is and I just know that's gonna be my favorite. Okay, that's gonna be my favorite. I called it right now, that's the song I'm claiming. I am so excited for that song. But there is also like a bunch of different songs that I'm really excited for, like track five. I, that's gonna be hard to listen to. And also all of these bonus tracks that keep getting added, like the albatross. Like I would love to see how she ties a freaking bird into a meaning of a song, okay? What metaphor is she going to use for an albatross like that okay i'm just super excited to see what she does with some of these outlandish names like the bolter the albatross like i just need to see where taylor's mind is going and i'm so excited because those metaphors are going to be crazy next question is do you think there'll be love songs on the album too um yes question mark the only two songs that i can see being love songs is down bad and love of my life which is the lol l o m l which that acronym if taylor was insane and we know she is that acronym could stand for something else and not love of my life which would be absolutely crazy bonkers of her but those are the only two that i would think might be love songs but i think if there are love songs about what we think this album is about I would almost think that it's more so of like in hindsight like looking back on the love so not like a true love song if that makes sense but I'm very interested to see what other songs might end up being love songs even if like maybe they're not about what we think the album inspiration is about and maybe something recent like something that has happened in the past year who knows next question is a question that i got a lot do you think she will add it to the tour this is something i ask myself every single day i don't know how she would do it like there are some songs like in midnights that i think maybe could be cut and her to add the tortured poets department section of the tour at the end but like thinking of karma not being the closer is just such a weird concept to me i just don't know how she would add in like three to four maybe even more songs into a new era on tour if that makes sense but i've heard people talk about how she has like two months off after tortured poets is released or before tortured poets is released something like that and she could definitely practice and rehearse a new section of the tour i don't know i haven't looked at the tour dates and like the whole schedule of it all so i don't know how possible that is but Taylor can do anything she wants and I'd be sat for it. Next question is, do you think the album will be pop like Midnight's or more like Folklore Evermore vibes? I, okay, looking at the aesthetics 
and the theme of the album. This album to me screams more red and folklore, just to me. I also thought that about Midnight's. Hearing the theme of Midnight's being like sleepless nights, she's, you know, all these deep emotions, I really thought it was going to be more folklore evermore. And Midnight's is not that. Okay, no, no, no. So I could definitely be wrong, but I've heard some people talk about how they think it might be more of like a red vibe because red has a lot of pop songs on it. So I, I could definitely see this album being like a mix between red and folklore, or it could all be pop. Who knows? There's a bunch of different genres that are listed on different websites and different platforms, putting Tortured Poets Department in different genres. Like I've seen it be labeled as like alternative, pop, synth pop. I don't think we're going to actually know the genre of the album until it's released on Apple Music and Spotify and things like that, which usually happens like a week or two before the album drops. So we'll know soon, but as of right now, I can only guess. All right, next question is, do you think she releases the vinyls in darker shades as symbolism for the grief stages? Okay, I have seen this on Twitter. This is not my theory in the slightest, but I have seen on Twitter people categorize the vinyl color as stages of grief, which is so interesting to me. And if this is actually her plan, she's brilliant, 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 brilliant. I like that theory. I don't know if that is what she's going for or if this is just very thematic, like the colors make sense together. But it would be very interesting if we do end up getting like five vinyls and then each of them could theoretically be each stage of grief, which would be very interesting. And I think that's that's super cool to think about. <laughs> All right, next question. What do you think about Clara Bow? So if you don't know, Clara Bow is the last track on the regular edition of the Torture Poets Department. Obviously we're getting bonus tracks, but on the regular track list, Clara Bow is the last track. I was not familiar with Clara Bow until everyone started looking it up on Twitter. And it turns out she was a 1920s actress, I believe. And she was like known as like the first it girl, which is so spot on to Taylor. I think that this song is going to be very the lucky one, last great American dynasty vibe in the way Taylor will probably tell the story of Clara Bow. I think she'll relate it back to her. I think it's like a perfect opportunity. I've also heard different narratives of Clara Bow's story. I don't know how many of them are true because these are all things on Twitter, but I've also heard that like she was very scrutinized in the media, that she had a lot of mental health problems because of of the stardom and the media and things like that. So it would be very, very interesting to see where Taylor takes this story and how it relates back to her because one thing she's gonna do is tell a good story and relate it back to her life. So I'm so excited for this song. What do you think L-O-M-L -L stands for? I talked about this earlier. It would be absolutely insane if Taylor did a different meaning for the acronym in the song. Obviously when we see L-O-L, oh my God, I can never say it. L-O-M-L, -L, we think that it means love of my life, which is what it stands for. But it would be, it, it would be absolutely insane and bonkers if she actually actually renamed the acronym in the song and it means like loss of my life or like something actually that's insane did I just come up with something wow anyway it could mean a bunch of different things so if she does use it as love of my life that would be very interesting to see if it's actually like a love song or if she you know renames the whole acronym that would equally be mind-boggling to see what she uses in the song i think it's going to be a really good track next question is are you getting the variants so a lot of people have been wondering this um i personally have not bought any of the vinyl variants which is something that i haven't done in the past releases for midnight i bought every variant when it came out but then she released the clock and then so I had to buy the variants that I didn't have yet. And then she came out with signed variants. So I had to buy duplicates of a variant that I already had, but I had to buy it because it was signed. And so I ended up with like 15 copies of Midnight's or something like that. So it was just not, um, good for my bank account. <laughs> so this time I am doing it a little differently. I have not bought in any vinyl variants, 
but I have bought every single deluxe version of the CD variant. So every time that she releases a new variant cover, which has been happening on tour via a live stream, <laughs> she then releases the variant on cassette, the variant on vinyl, and the variant on a deluxe CD, which comes with like a bunch of little stuff in the CD package. So I've only been buying the CD. I am going to wait until the album actually comes out to buy the variants, or if signed versions come out, I will buy the variants then. But I just thought like in the past, all the variants end up coming out in stores online at some point. Like I don't need to be stressing about getting every vinyl variant right now. So I'm holding off on that and just buying the CD variants because I don't want the CD variants to go out of stock, especially because they have those cute little inserts and bookmarks and badges and all the stuff that comes in it. So I've been buying the CDs, but not the vinyl. But let me know what you guys are doing. I'm very interested. When do you think we are getting merch? Listen, I'm a very impatient person, especially when it comes to merch, obviously. And so I have calculated <laughs> how many days between each announcement did we get the merch? So going off of Midnight's, because that is the last brand new album that we got. And these Taylor's versions have kind of been a little confusing with like, releases and dates and all that. So going based off of her last full album that she dropped, Midnight's announcement was on August 29th, 2022. The Target exclusive variant came out about two weeks later on September 13th. So we still are expecting, theoretically, a Target exclusive variant. And then the first merch launch was September 27th. And then signed CDs came out October 2nd. And then Midnight's ended up releasing on October 20th. First. So using this kind of template, I guess, we would theoretically be getting merch or at least our first merch launch about three weeks before the album comes out. So that would mean what? Like, hold on, let me get my calendar out. <laughs> um, so it comes out on the 19th. One, two, three, maybe March 22nd or 29th, somewhere around there. So maybe in like a few weeks we would get our first merch launch. But who knows? She could switch it up. She is absolutely insane. And we think we know everything and then we absolutely know nothing. So, <laughs> all right, next song is, are you doing anything fun for release day? So I am actually going to a listening party that one of my friends is hosting that weekend. I'm very, 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 very excited. And on release day, obviously I always go to Target. I always get the album on release day. I am already planning my release day outfits and what I want to wear to Target. <laughs> um, but I'm very, very excited. So you guys will see that very soon. And if you wanna keep up with my release week shenanigans, you can follow me on my Instagram because I'll probably be posting way too much about it. <laughs> Which are you more looking forward to, the manuscript or the bolter? Well, this was taken before we got the Albatross. So now there's three bonus tracks that we know of. Out of all of them, I'm very, very excited and interested to see what the bolter is about and how she works that name into the song. It always blows me away like seeing a track name but then hearing it actually be sung in the song um so i'm very excited about the bolter obviously people are assuming what they think it is about online but i'm very excited to see how she works that in and like what metaphor she uses to explain it because that's also very interesting i'm also interested to see what the manuscript is about and also the albatross how the freak is she got again the bird how is she going to work a bird into a song and relate it back to her I, uh, the things that she does confuses me sometimes and how she does it and the albatross is one of those things anyway all right these are questions that i took from my instagram story that you guys put today someone said what just happened this morning so if you are watching this which you are not on march 2nd let me explain so this morning we woke up i well i did i woke up at 6 30 because i live in arizona and the time zones are not in my favor i woke up at 6 30 in the morning because taylor nation yesterday posted a tweet that alluded to the fact that we were going to have a tortured poets department meeting at the era's tour show if this doesn't make any sense to you <laughs> Go on Twitter, it will make a lot more sense. We've been having meetings, okay? <laughs> and they've been taking place on Instagram Live. And so Taylor usually Instagram Lives the portion of the set during the surprise song acoustic section where she releases a new 
tortured poets vinyl variant that's how we got the bolter that's how we got the albatross and then it goes on her website and is for sale and whatever so today we were supposed to have another meeting taylor goes on live just like clockwork and instead of announcing another variant which she has done previously she just live streamed the piano acoustic songs and those songs were i don't want to live forever mashed up with dress two songs from the reputation era so everyone was confused she didn't say anything about the tortured poets department she didn't even talk before the piano set and she just played the songs and then the live stream ended <laughs> so we were all very very confused I literally tweeted and I was like, this is the kind of meeting that could have been an email. So we were all very confused. People are now speculating that this was a reputation Easter egg. Oh, and by the way, during all of this, her merch website was shut down. It was all black. And usually they use a white heart in the title of the live streams, but today they use a black heart. Dude, I cannot keep up with any of this crap. Anyway, so everyone's confused, point blank. People have obviously been going into like the website code, and like looking for Easter eggs in there. The website code ended up saying something along the lines of like two months from now, something like that. And so now people are like, okay, two months from now is May 2nd, which is after Tortured Poets. Is that when maybe Reputation is going to be announced? And then that Friday, it's gonna be released. Like that was something that I tweeted and I was like kind of toying with like, what does the two months from now mean? But anyway, we don't know anything. The merch store is back up. Um, <laughs> We didn't have a meeting today. It was just Taylor singing her, her songs. Very good. Vocals were top tier, but it didn't give us any information. So um, that's what happened today. I honestly have no, no clue. Um, my immediate thought was Taylor Nation got the day wrong and Taylor was not going to release anything today, but Taylor never does anything on accident. Do you really think Taylor Allison Swift forgets? Forgets? No, that's not, that's not something that happens in her brain. So my only guess is that all of this was an Easter egg and I have no idea what the Easter egg would be for. So to be determined, but that is it for our little chat on the tortured poets department. If you guys have any other things that you want my opinion on or want to chat about amongst yourselves down below, please do. I would love to see what your guys' thoughts are and predictions and theories are on the tortured poets department. I am so, so, so excited for April 19th. I just love when Taylor comes out with a new album. Like I feel like so inspired and so creative to do like little crafts or like get outfits together for a release day or something like that like it's just so much fun also if you have any other requests for other tortured poets department themed videos leave them down below i would love to get some more ideas on what to do leading up to april 19th but don't forget to subscribe and also follow me on all my other social medias they will be linked down below also a huge disclaimer that more information about the tortured poets department will most likely come out by the time that this is uploaded so just know that i had an additional freak out when more information was was released to us okay anyway i love you guys so much i hope you guys have the best day ever and i will see you guys in my next video bye